Hi. In our last video on the catamaran boat project, near the end I promised that I would go through the fabrication technique that was used to build the rudders that we mounted on the back of each of the hulls. And that's what I'm going to do today. In fabrication, there are several different major categories. One is what's called subtractive manufacturing. That's what you think of when you think of drilling and milling and turning and grinding. It's the removal of material from a large billet block or a plate to get to your net final shape. Another major category is additive manufacturing. That's 3D printing or welding or soldering, brazing. You're adding material to end up with the final shape. There's a third category called forging or casting, where you effectively build a mold uh, to guide the flow of either a liquid or a softened material into a final shape or a near net final shape that requires minimal post fabrication and saves a lot of materials. The technique I'm going to show you today is probably most similar to the forging and to the molding. It's what's called stressed panel manufacturing. Let me show you how this works. Now this technique takes advantage of commercially available, very homogeneous or homogeneous, thin flexible sheets. And what you can do is you can bend or curve in one dimension these sheets to form a very smooth, very continuous, fair curve and saves on a lot of the milling and the machining of the jigs and the uh, supports that would be necessary to mold these materials. And you can form either spherical curves, you can form parabolic curves, or as we're going to do today, you can form hyperbolic curves. All of these curves depend on the fact that this material, because it's so uniform, that when paired with an identical piece of material, each material applies an equal force to its partner. And so you end up with symmetrical shapes, again, saving a lot of time and a lot of effort. A couple of months ago, I fabricated a elliptical trough for a solar cell concentrator. And in order to do that, because I didn't have a mate and I also was doing some fairly significant curving, I actually had to fabricate these ribs in order to support this in the shape that it's in right now. Now, one of the uh, requirements, one of the minimal requirements is that the sheets or the material needs to be as uniform and flat as possible so you end up with a symmetrical result. If you see this very thin piece of fiberglass, you can see the wobble and the twist in it. And if you get any of the big box plywood, you're going to see the same sort of uh, irregular curves and twisting. You don't want to use material like that because you're going to end up with an uneven part. You want high quality materials. You can use plastic, metal, wood, fiberglass, whatever you like. And what's nice is that if you use a material that itself is structural, you then don't have to reinforce the outside of it with additional fiberglass and epoxy and sanding and all the other operations. So this can save a great deal of time. Now the way I actually fabricated these rudders is quite simple and I'm going to demonstrate that over here. Now what I did is I took some three millimeter thick fiberglass panels and cut them identical in terms of size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix one end. That's the, going to be the, the trailing edge of the rudder. And in stitch and glue boat manufacture, I've covered this earlier, this is an ancient technique that involves drilling a lot of tiny little holes along one surface and then suturing it together, either with an organic material or typically copper wire that acts to approximate the surfaces but gives them the ability to hinge. If we were just going to be producing a triangular shape, which the rudder sort of looks like but isn't really, you could just open these up, place a spacer at the other end, and then fix everything in place. But because there's a tremendous increase in strength from either, even a slight curvature in the surfaces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the, the trailing edge so that the edges have to be parallel to each other. And there's an easy trick to do that without necessarily drilling a bunch of holes. And it takes advantage of very strong two-dimensional fiberglass reinforced tape. So I'm going to take a piece of this tape and I'm going to cut off a generous piece that's at least as wide as this material is. Then I'm going to apply the tape to this surface here slightly less than halfway so that I'm allowing for the thickness of the material itself and 
press it down so I get a good attachment. It doesn't matter that I have extra material on the, on the sides. We're going to cut that off if we don't want it. Then what I'm going to do is taking the two panels and I'm going to line them up very carefully because this is what's going to determine symmetry. So I use a flat surface here. I'm going to get the end to be as even as I can possibly get it. And then I'm going to take these clamps, of which you can never have too many, and we're going to put these across the back surface here to maintain the alignment of these panels as we put the tape on the other side. Then I'm going to turn this over again so that I can see this side here. And if there is a slight bending or bowing of the two parts away from each other, by putting this right over the support and using my fingers to press down so that we get a good approximation, I then fold over the tape like this. Generally, it's better to start in the middle, but it's not that critical. And we're going to tape this like this. Now, if I remove the clamps and open this up, you'll see that it opens up like a book. But the thickness of the material produced a very even gap in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of this toughened epoxy. You can make your own with a two-part epoxy by adding some aluminum powder, but this is very convenient because it not only has pre-mixing, but it also has a nice nozzle that allows me to fab, uh, feed this in here. So we're going to inject a little bit of this into the gap between the two parts. Now, if I were to close this right now, and there were no, no epoxy in here, this would just slam shut. But if you look carefully when this gets very near closing, you're going to see that this upper panel sort of decelerates as it falls down. So one, two, three. That slowness is because the two surfaces were squeezing the epoxy between them. And then what I do is I get these perfectly aligned like this. And then reusing my clamps. One, two, and three. Place this over the block here and put this on top of here, and we'll let this dry overnight. The end result, after a night of drying, is something like this. If I pull these apart, you can see that the trailing edge remains parallel. So I tend to get in a hyperbolic curve out of this, and that makes this far stiffer than it would be if I built a triangle, because the panels themselves, as they're rounded, don't want to bend this way at the trailing edge. So now the spacer could be anything, but what's nice about using a round spacer is that there's only one contact point. I don't get a square which can kind of tip and tilt depending on where on the surface it's mounting. So by placing this little spacer in here like this, if you wanted a nice rounded front to your rudder, you could leave this only halfway into the gap and then you would get that nice rounding already. Problem is feathering this edge between the two different types of material is kind of a hassle. It doesn't work really very well. A better way to do this is to actually insert this a little below the ends of the fiberglass panels. And the way that you can make sure that this happens very uh, uniform, uniformly, is to take a spacer like this three mill little milliliter metal machining spacer and placing this like this and using that to push the rod up a given amount of distance. Then I take a different type of epoxy. This is a five minute, very quick, not very structural epoxy. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to tack the rod in place for the machining I'm going to do afterward. And we're going to inject this into the structure. But all I'm going to be doing here is just tacking this. So this is not precision and it doesn't matter how much I use and I can even spill a little bit inside of here doesn't really matter. And in about 30 minutes, this will be strong enough that we can do the next stages. And we'll let this harden. And after about a half hour, we're going to end up with something that looks like this. This has been tacked already. It's secure enough to be able to do the next steps. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to form some troughs in order to keep the epoxy in here when we fill this up. And the way we're going to do that is to take advantage of these P3 
PVC foam blocks. They have a nice glaze on the surface and they don't stick well to the epoxy. And they're easy to cut and manipulate. And so what we're gonna do is place this on top of here, the back one just to keep this level. And this one here, what I'm gonna do is use some hot glue and we're going to seal the edges of this to form uh, an epoxy type barrier. So if I come over here like this, I'm just gonna run a little bead. This is not precision work by any means. Just wanna make sure that we get the junction and we fill that with some nice glue. That, and then we'll go around to the other side and we'll do the same thing. We'll take about three minutes, two minutes for this to get stiff enough that we can handle it. And the glue also pops off of these, this PVC material very nicely. That works well. All right, so now that this has gotten nice and tacky, what we're gonna do is gonna bring this around to the vise. And let me come around in front of your camera for just a second. And I'm gonna put this in here like this. And then we're gonna to try to level this because we want as even a final bond as possible. I'm gonna tap this a little bit. Till we're close to level. That's pretty good. Tighten that up. And then we'll just check to make sure we're level this way. That's pretty good. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to plug the other side. And to do that, I'm going to take another one of these foam blocks that I've machined a little bit of a notch in. So if I put this down here like this, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on this thing too. So I'll come in here like that. And I'll put a little bead along here. Like this. So rather than have the epoxy, which seems to be able to leak through very, very small gaps, what I'm going to do is use some of this thickened, toughened material because it tends to be much more thixotropic. It doesn't run. It's more like toothpaste. And we're going to fill a small little bead along the edges, really just to seal this up. This isn't so much mechanically strong. It's just watertight. So I'll start on the back side as this thing is still getting a little bit stiffer. And I'm going to run a little bead right along here. And we don't need much. We just need enough to kind of get into the gap and flow down into there to form a seal. Now typically what you would do is you would wait about three or four hours until this stuff toughens up, gets kind of gummy. As long as it's still sticky, it will form a, a primary covalent bond with the other epoxy and it'll be much stronger. If we go right away, there may be enough pressure to kind of push this stuff through any kind of gaps. But for the demonstration, I think we can go ahead and kind of accelerate this a little bit. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of epoxy to fill this up. My tried and true Reka epoxy, it's one of my favorites because it's very inexpensive. And it's an approximately two to one ratio in terms of resin and hardener. By weight, it's a slightly higher ratio of the hardener. And then we're gonna add about 50 of the hardener. This is the slow hardener which is best when you're doing any kind of potting because this stuff is exothermic and can burn up if you use some of the very fast curing material. So 50 will go to 130. It's close enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix this. This thicker, more viscous epoxy does tend to accumulate bubbles. And you can look at some of our earlier videos on the uh, use of epoxy and you can use a vacuum chamber to remove the bubbles and get a much glassier finish now, what we're going to do is we're then going to fill this gap, this trough, with the epoxy. And you want to try to be careful not to get this anywhere else, but just pouring it along here like this, filling up the gap, trying to be reasonably neat. And what we're looking to do is to try to bring this as close as we can 
to parallel with those edges. And that's why you want to kind of pour it along here so you don't end up pouring it over one side and uh, being shy on the other. If you're a little generous, it's just a matter of sanding. In this kind of an application where we're going to be mounting things on this, like I did on the rudder, if you look at the rudder, I'll just bring this over. I wanted a flat surface because in order to uh, put the hardware on this rudder, I needed a flat surface, so I just left this flat and basically painted over it. So the machining is basically done. Another thing to keep in mind is when I attached this rudder to this pipe, these holes have been drilled as well as tapped. And because when you try to drill into the round edge of a pipe, the drill bit will tend to walk. The trick is to drill and tap the center of each of the two fittings and then mount them, lock them in position, and then use these holes as drill guides to help keep the drill lined up as you're trying to drill into the side of the material, which would otherwise cause the drill to kind of move off to the side. Situation though, you'll notice if we go back to this little example in the vise, is that I've left this open. And clearly, you don't want that. You need to somehow close that in. And so the trick to being able to close this in and form a very strong panel is to take advantage of the fact that a panel's stiffness is proportional to the cube of its dimensions. So if what we can do is we can actually frame the panel by putting some structural material around the edges, reducing its unsupported area, even a little bit, will make this far, far stronger. And so I'm gonna show you how I filled these up very quickly by using the same sort of epoxy technique. All right, this has had about 30 minutes now to tack up. It's not gonna be very strong, but it's strong enough for our purposes. Now, in order to frame this part here, in order to get this closed in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down on a longer piece of the PVC like this to form a barrier on the bottom surface. And then using the trusty old hot glue gun, run a bead along here like this. Give this about two minutes, and then this thing is all ready to receive a dose of epoxy. So we'd mix up another batch of epoxy, and then what we do is we can calculate the volume by simply taking the triangle, the distance here times the base of the tri triangle times one half, because it's a triangle, and then how thick you want it. One or two centimeters is plenty. Mix up that volume and then just carefully pour that into the top here. It will flow into that entire bottom surface and you end up getting a very good result. Let me show you over here what happens when I did this yesterday and let this harden up. I have another example of the same setup sealed along here and filled up with epoxy. And this stuff does break away pretty easily. And as you can see, you get an excellent surface down here. This is easily removed with just a razor blade because it's just hot glue. But you can see this is perfect. And a little bit of sanding, or you could just almost paint this at this point because it's, it's almost mere flat. It's as flat as this was. Now what you can do, now that we've filled up this, is if we want to continue this process, we can then do the same thing here by putting a little dam over here and then depending on this to seal this side, this to seal this side, take a syringe, mix up a little epoxy, put it in here and just inject epoxy in here and we can fill up along here to strengthen and stiffen this lower edge like this. Now, once this has been cured, you're gonna ask, well then how do you get this one filled? Because of the fact that, well, obviously there's no way to pour it in. And what I did on the rudder and what you can do too is if you look at the bottom of this rudder, I'll aim it like this so you can see it more easily. I simply took a drill and a pipe tap, a tapered tap, and a tiny little plastic plug. I drilled this out, tapped it, and then using the same syringe, I injected the epoxy in here, filled up the lower surface like this, and then when everything was hardened, just screwed the plug in below the surface, and it looks nice. And now the entire inside here is just an air gap. Now you could fill this with some expanding foam. It really isn't necessary because the panels themselves are already very stiff and they're supported all the way around the edge. Now you can see that the form of this though is not a perfect rectangle. And so what I did is on this side here where there's a significant cut 
at the very beginning stage, when I formed those two initial panels, I actually cut them to a wedge so that I would end up with a wedge-shaped result. These here were easy to curve simply because I've got epoxy that pretty much runs all the way from here all the way to here. And so this was just hand sanded, tapered to bring it to a nice curvature. And then at that point, you just rough everything up, put a little coat of primer on here, paint it, and you're done. Now, this might be interesting, certainly, if you're going to build any kind of a structure like a boat rudder. But there are other applications that you can use this kind of technology for that might be more interesting to you. So let me show you next door what I'm working on now. So what this is, is sort of a prototype mock-up of a very lightweight fish tank that I'm manufacturing. And anybody who's worked with acrylic fish tanks or large fish tanks, you know that because of the hydraulic pressure against the bottom and the top of the tank, these panels tend to bow out. And so you need to use really heavy, very expensive material. But if in fact you can use curved surfaces, you could potentially make the tank a lot cheaper and a lot lighter and actually kind of interesting in terms of its shape. And so what I did is using this stressed panel type of design, I took two pieces of very thin, this is, uh, I think it's four or five millimeter uh, plexiglass, cut it and then put them on these, uh, this rack that effectively compresses the surface in the middle to give you a nice even curve. Then I'll pour in some epoxy into the bottom here, forming about a one or one and a half centimeter thick bottom, which does three things. One, it forms the bottom surface without having to cut a complex piece of plexiglass. It seals the surface and also provides the bonding or the support that keeps everything together. If this works successfully and gives me a nice surface and I don't get a lot of flexure here, then the idea is to produce a tank that is effectively four sides like this on all surfaces with the corner joints being coupled together by using that epoxy technique in the gap in the corners so that we get a clear joint without needing these pipes and a very lightweight tank that has a really unusual shape. And hopefully it doesn't leak. So hopefully this was useful. We've done a number of videos on epoxy and you might want to take a look at some of those others because they give you a little bit more background into some of the other techniques that can be used with composites and epoxy. And if you find this valuable and interesting, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to be producing more videos on a variety of subjects, including fabrication. And if you have a question, put it in the comments below because I read them all and I try to answer as many questions as I can. Other than that, I'll wish you a very happy afternoon safe manufacturing and you take care.